In this video, I'm going to share with you the best two-point conversion or the best goal line play in Madden 22. What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, be sure to subscribe. We upload new videos every single day that can help you get better at this game. Now guys, this is an excerpt out of my Seattle Seahawks offensive guide. So if you want to learn the entire offense, how to absolutely dominate on offense, put up 50 plus points a game, pretty much never get stopped. I would encourage you to get the Seattle offensive guide. There's going to be a link in the description and you can get that for just 15 bucks. Okay, guys, so I wanted to break this down. This is an absolute dot uh, inside the five-yard line. Um, really, it's it's inside the four, but it's a great goal line or two-point conversion play, and the play is tight end hook out of the Seattle Sucks playbook. I don't know how many other playbooks have it. I know Seattle does. I'm pretty sure they might be the only playbook that has this play, but you could also use something like the play uh, wide receiver curl, inside cross. The, any of these three plays right here are really good for this concept. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, call the play Titan Hook. Now, notice that I'm in the middle of the field. The reason why I'm in the middle of the field is because if you go for two, they're going to give you the ball in the middle of the field. This play works differently to the wide side of the field. Let me make a quick disclaimer. Do not run this play with your bunch to the wide side of the field. If you run this play with your bunch to the wide side of the field, it's not going to work properly. So make sure that you put your bunch either in the middle of the field or you put your three receivers out of your bunch to the short side of the field. That is going to significantly help your odds of being able to manipulate a lot of the coverages that you're going to see down here inside the five. All right, guys, so if they have zone drops on, zone drops are going to make the defense significantly worse inside the five-yard line. So we're going to teach this tip without any zone drops. Again, if they have zone drops on, everything gets more open. Every single route will be way more open if they play with zone drops on, okay? That being said, I want to first cover the most popular defense that you're going to face inside the five-yard line, and that is man-to-man -man coverage with two purple zones. So I'm going to put two purple zones out here just like so, and then I'm going to put my user in a quarterback spy or just middle zone so he can kind of cover the middle of the field. This is the most popular defense that you are going to see in this year's game if you're trying to score inside the five. So the setup for this is really simple. All we're going to do you don't have to have Hot Route Master. You don't have to have any route apprentices whatsoever. So all we're going to do is we're going to motion this square receiver to the inside and put him on a hitch route. Uh, really, really important that we put him on a hitch route. And then the next thing we're going to do is put the running back on an in route. And what I like to do with the tight end is leave him on his route or put him on a block and release drag route. I personally think that the tight end curl route is one of the best ways to beat man. If everything breaks down, you can always look to the tight end. Okay, that being said, all we're going to do here is we're going to look to the right side. And if we get pressed right off the bat, um, then what we're going to do is we're going to immediately look down to this R1 receiver. And as you can see, he is our money route. He's the best route on this play. He's the route that literally is borderline impossible uh, to defend, whether it be in man coverage or zone coverage. So it's very likely that your opponent, as you run this a couple times, they're going to figure out, oh, I need to go guard the... the, the um, the crossing route, right? I need to go guard the crossing route. If they do that, what you're going to notice here is your running back is going to absolutely torch and sit right underneath it in a great little position to be able to get consistent separation against man. He's also going to get consistent separation against zone. Now, the next thing that they might do is they might go ahead and say, okay, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do some hard flats. Uh, we're going to try to really get down in the grill. I'm going to take the slot receiver with my user, and we're going to try to play some hard flats. What you're going to notice with this play is if they run some kind of hard, um, some hard flats, you're going to see here, take a look at what happens. You're going to notice here that you're tied in, just low ball. And as you can see, that's why I'm saying he's one of the best check down reads in the game because as you can see, he gets in such a vulnerable position for the defense. Now where this play gets a lot of fun is when they start to get out of man coverage and they decide, you know what, I'm going to go to zone coverage. This play kills zone coverage, okay, kills it. So we're going to start with Tampa 2. And the money route against zone is actually going to be this circle receiver. You're going to see that not only is he going to do a good job of pulling zones out of the middle of the field, he's also going to do a good job of beating pretty much every zone in the game. All we're going to do is just throw this to the right. And occasionally that player will do that. It doesn't normally happen. If it does happen, there's so much else open. Uh, let me go over that one more time. So again, I'm just going to go to Tampa 2. And the big thing is the press. So real quick, motion this guy in. Let me show you this route circle again. And again, this is much better to the short side. I'll show it to the short side in the beginning in a second. 
But you see, to the middle of the field, you see how that corner will sit on him? Let me just show this real quick to the short side so I can give you an idea of what I'm looking at. So I'm just going to move the ball. Um, I'm just going to move the ball to the right. And I want to show you this. This is a short side, short side concept. Like I said, if you're going for two and you're in the middle of the field, um, they will play a little bit better on this out route. Um, the, the fix for that is really truly to motion. You know, if you motion, um, the other thing, you, there's several things you can do to fix it. We'll go over that in just a second. But I just want to show you this route to the short side. So as you see here, the, the short side, meaning the bunch is to the short side of the field. There's more grass to the left than to the right. Watch this circle receiver. You're going to see that's what we want to see. And that right there, that's exactly the same coverage. That's Tampa 2. And you're seeing that we're able to com completely manipulate Tampa 2. Now I'm going to move the ball back to the center of the field. So I, I want to try to be really clear about the center of the field. Because I think that you really need to understand that they did, they work, the concepts do work a little different um, when you're in the middle versus when you're on the right hat or to when you're able to put your bunch uh, to the short side of the field. So now you'll see I'm back in the middle and you see that he gets pressed. Now if he gets pressed, what you can easily do is just check it right down to the running back and you're able to get open. So I'm not super worried about that, but basically what you're looking for is if the, if the corner presses the circle receiver, that's when I pretty much almost never throw that route. I almost immediately move to the next read. Now, your R1 receiver is truly the best route on this play because you're going to see here that, and right there I made a bad pass lead, but what you're going to see is he's going to completely manipulate coverage, um, especially, um, especially any kind of zone. So any kind of zone, this is why we like to take this receiver, motion him in and put him on a hitch um, because what that's going to do is it's going to hold these zone coverages. So you see here, just kind of sit, high point, and that's what we get right there. Now, sometimes they will make that catch tackle, but honestly, it's very rare. And I'm telling you, cover two, to me, is the best defense for uh, for this. But there's so many things that are open, like you're running back in route, and they have it has to be cover two stock, too. It can't be, um, it can't be like cover two hard flat, okay? Now, let me just show you another thing here. Again, your running back route is going to pull zone and then you're going to be able to hit your tight end route. So let me show you that again. So you're just going to simply do this. Motion this guy in. Okay. We're in Tampa two stock. Now watch your tight end route. Just low ball passing inside. You see, you can stick that right in that little money pocket right there. Okay. So then what the defense is very likely to do if they do want to stay in Tampa 2 is you'll see they'll drop both of these linebackers into flats and basically open up the middle of the field. This is the number one reason why I like to use um, a curl or a hitch to the square receiver because take a look at what happens. The zones get pulled out and you can easily check it down right there as well. So you're able to really work both sides of the concept. And then the last thing that I want to go over is cover three. And cover three is not going to stand a chance against this play. So um, so cover three. And I want you to watch the circle receiver. You should see you're going to always be able to beat that coverage. Every single time, that coverage will never, ever defend that route. So if they run some kind of cover three hard flat, it's not going to matter because the, the hard flat will never defend that, especially in the red zone. And it most certainly the deep third won't defend it. So you don't have anything to worry about if they run cover three. If they run cover three, this is an absolute dime. I mean, it's just completely the third glitches out. And as you can see, it's easy money on the red zone. Now, the where this gets a little tricky um, is, again, obviously I said, you know, cover two, I think plays this to bet the best out of any coverage um, that you're gonna see. But I also want to show this R1 receiver. Um, you're going to see here against cover three, he's going to manipulate that to the T. As long as he doesn't get that random, that random like bumping animation, he's going to be able to beat both coverages. You just have to wait on it a little bit. So again, we're just going to go to cover three, uh, cover three, bring this guy in. And I want you to watch the R1 receiver here. Pass lead left, and there you see, able to beat it. So we're able to beat cover three very consistently. We're able to beat cover two uh, pretty consistently as well. Like I said, cover two, if they press the coverage, it's going to defend it a little bit different than if they're in a base align 
situation like you previously saw. It also, and I'm going to show hard flats in just a second just so I can kind of clean that up. But take a look. So here he's pressed. You see that you can't, you, you can do that animation and try to get a rocket catch, but you can't quite hit that. As long as he has outside leverage, he's going to be in a pretty good spot. However, if they go Tampa 2, and let's say they press coverage on that right side, you'll see here that a press guy, he's never going to defend that. So they can't play hard flat Tampa 2. It has to be a cloud flat and a hard flat. The problem with that, and if, they, if we know that they're going to do that, what we can easily do is we can just motion Brown to the outside, get him a little bit more outside leverage, and you see where he's going to sit. So, you know, that's kind of a little bit of a trick to the short side that you can do. So if they're, if they're doing kind of a standard Tampa 2, what you can do is put Evans on a smoke screen. That way you can still motion Brown to the outside and just get him as far outside as you can, and you see you're going to get that animation every single time. So I really like that as an option against cover two. If they're giving you these um, defenses where they're trying to kind of keep their outside leverage, you know, maybe they do something like this where they base align the defense. You're going to see right here, again, just kind of motion this guy out and you'll see the cloud sucks in completely and we're able to hit that route to circle. So uh, I really love this play a lot. I think that this is a really, really good concept. Obviously, there's ways to build off of this as well. Uh, one of those is to take the square receiver and put him on a zig. Um, the reason I like that is because let's say they're playing Tampa 2 coverage. You'll see here this zig route, just pass lead this to the left. Oftentimes you can actually hit that consistently against cover 2. So if they're giving you this off coverage stuff, if you use this little zig, you'll see if there's a cloud coverage, he'll back up. See how we can fit that ball in there. So um, this is just a fun little red zone play. I've got some other ones that I really like, but I pretty much go for two every single time right now in this year because um, I think it's so important to be able to consistently convert two-point conversions. So this is a great concept. I'd encourage you to practice it a little bit, lab it up. It's it's really unstoppable to the short side. If it's shorts, if you can run your bunch to a short side, so if your ball's on, if the ball's on a hash mark, it's unstoppable. When you're in the middle of the field, it's still really, really good. It's just cover two can cause a little bit of friction. So you need to be checking down your running back if they're playing the cloud flat. Or if they're not, or if they're double flatting, then you need to check it down to your tight end. But you still are going to have your slot crosser that's wide open every single time. So that being said, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you want to get the offensive guide, there's a link in the description of the video down below. Uh, you can get the full offensive system for just 15 bucks. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you guys later.